because I am standing with Judge Roy Moore I find myself within the circle of malice now focused on him by the forces of evil that are moving inexorably to procure the complete destruction of the Constitution and identity of the people of the United States. Their greatest enemy is God, of course, as he has shared himself, in spirit and truth, in and through Jesus Christ. Their enmity naturally extends as Christ said it would to anyone willing faithy to bear witness to God's authority over the universe created by and through his word. This includes, of course, his authority over all the determinations and conceptions that define human existence the bonds of material, moral and spiritual obligation that allow for human action and choice, according to the providence by which he makes good the promising nature on which our continued existence depends. I have received a slew of responses to my articles presenting the reasoning that obliges me, for the sake of God and the common good of our nation, to stand firmly with Judge Roy Moore during this time of unjust and malicious trial. Many of those responses encourage and give thanks for the work people are doing to detoxify the of incoherent accusation and abusive epithets most of Moore's opponents substitute for coherent reasoning. However, a glimmer of truth consistently blinks out, revealing their contempt for him and folks like me because we believe in God and the logic of the American Declaration of Independence, which defines right and justice in terms of God's rule. Moore's uncompromised insistence upon this logic is the reason his detractors are attempting to immerse his name and reputation in an acid bath of corrosive allegations. Like the good communists some of them are, they viciously accuse their opponents of the sins they have blithely ignored or encouraged among themselves. To this extent their behavior reflects the truth of God's overruling presence in the universe of our experience, in that they understand that the ultimate issue is not a matter of this or that factual misdeed it's a matter of standing for or against God, of remembering or discarding his universal sovereignty. They weaponize allegations of misconduct, even though in other respects they deny every standard that permits us to distinguish right doing from wrong. But the only sin they eagerly acknowledge and implacably condemn is the sin against their God-hatred, the sin that rejects their rejection of God. So, they seek to annihilate anyone who seeks mercy and forgiveness from God and Christ, where it may be found, and who disdains to seek it where it will never be accorded to anyone who offends their pitiless pride. In this the God-haters are like Lamech, the offspring of Cain. They promise unremittingly merciless civil death to those who prefer God's just and self-contained authority to their sickly arrogant, overreaching, lawless and irresponsible power. This preference grievously wounds their vainglorious pride. The record of mass murder associated with the atheistic political cults of the 20th century attests to the fact that the God-haters will not long content themselves with inflicting civic death. Already they move to deprive faithful witnesses to God's authority of their livelihoods and imprison them for using words that reject the rejection of God, or refusing to use terms that submit to it. Already they offer human sacrifice on the altars of abortion and make a hecatomb of natural family life. They make mock of humanity's self-perpetuation with rituals of self-obsessed self-negation, wherein individuals deny and disparage God-endowed natural right. People who hold to the premises of God acknowledging liberty that historically ground and enable the success of Republican self-government in the United States, need to consider the destructive consequences of the relaxation of constitutional precautions against the abuse of our government's national security powers since Sept. 11, 2001. This change is ostensibly directed, in large part, against foreign-inspired terrorists, mostly spawned by Islamist imperialism, which is principally responsible for the acts of terror that have proliferated since then. Now, however, the country's corrupt and corrupting entertainment sector is being mined for examples of UAL crime and misconduct, for use in fomenting an environment of outraged passion that fosters a presumption of credibility for accusations of predatory UAL behavior. Meanwhile, in products of that same industry, people of good faith who reject the God-haters are being routinely portrayed in a way that encourages the assumption that Christian faith in God is an incubator of domestic terrorism. Is this intended to justify a presumption of guilt when the refusal to accept the rejection of God is construed as an intimidating crime, deserving harsh punishment for the terror it supposedly inflicts upon adherents of the deadly cults of abortion and UAL licentiousness? by discarding constitutional constraints, predicated upon natural right and respect for God-endowed justice and fair play due process, we are already being moved toward an environment of unbridled government power. It begins to resemble the condition that permitted totalitarian governments in the 20th century to commit massive atrocities, in the name of history and the untrammeled power of supposedly progressive governments. 
as we are being goaded toward the same condition of totalitarian government by fear and force, isn't it naive to believe we will escape the murderous results foreshadowed time and again by the record of such governments in the last century? Will people of good faith become the kulaks of 21st century America, sacrificed by the millions once the theology of liberty is openly outlawed? Forbid it, Almighty God. We must not meekly surrender ourselves or the political champions of our faith to the God-hating new order of things. We must never contemn as fools brave and God-loving leaders, like Judge Roy Moore, who are faithful unto civic and even corporeal death. Instead we must unite behind them, trusting in God for the hope of humanity that was, and ought always to be, uplifted as the bonded purpose of our existence as a free people.